Hey guys, what's going on? In this video I'm going to talk to you about what I feel is the main reason good players still find themselves losing players. This is their attitude control. I personally feel that it's something I struggle with more than anything when I play the game. Even now after several years of playing, it is still the cause for me blowing a large amount of money from my winnings. Attitude is everything when you play poker. It's what defines you as a player and it will either make you or break you. Even pros are still bothered by their attitude. So what is the main problem when it comes to attitude? All I can do here is speak of my own personal experience and what it can do to me and how I attempt to counter it. I find with myself I, I have something I call a breaking point. This is where I can cannot emotionally take the bad beats, bad luck I am encountering. Once this point is met my game shall become poorer and poorer. I can usually take around three of these colossal hits before I become too frustrated and start playing poorly. So what I recommend to you as players is to look at yourself, even though self-analysis is one of the hardest things you can do, but try. Look at yourself and think, am I annoyed by that? Did that piss me off? Is, there, is this making me play different? Am I chasing after those, chi those lost chips? If you think you can sit there and take bad beat after bad beat, and it does not affect your game, you're either a machine or a sick human being, because I find it highly unlikely. So by now you're probably thinking, well, what can I do about this? You know, I continuously get pissed off, I continuously play really well, slowly make some money and then blow it all because one hand ruined me. Again, all I can tell you is what I do. If I'm on multiple tables, I think, yep, I'm playing poorly, this is getting to me. I may do a variety of different things. I'll reduce the number of players number of tables I'm on. Keep a close eye on my stats, mostly my aggression. If it's slowly creeping up then I have to get off the table. Um, but the most regularly used is uh, I take a break. I just, you know, close down my tables. You know, it's kind of difficult to do if you're in tournaments, but you know, if you are a cash game player, just sit out and, you know, get yourself a drink. Being a Brit, I go and smash that kettle on. If you are someone who likes to expel anger, Give your desk equipment a break, stop smashing the mouse across the room and get yourself a punch bag or something, you know? Um, maybe a stress ball, maybe that'll help you out, I don't know. There, is, there was a tactic I used to use where I used to wear an elastic band on my wrist and it sounds stupid, but every single time I thought I was doing something wrong, I'd pull that elastic band and let go. And that seemed to sort of control me a bit more. This is when I used to play cash games, but the reason I find myself a losing cash game player is because of this. It's something I struggle with immensely. I struggle with controlling my attitude and I know that if I play tournaments I'm much less likely to blow a whole load of money as opposed to cash games because in cash games you you know you'll take a bad beat and then next thing you know you've blown three buy-ins because you can just keep clicking that rebuy button. I'm sure there are some tournaments where you can do that but it's a lot less harder to do if you see what I mean. You know there's no point distressing and pissing away your hard-earned cash because remember it's very easy to piss it all away and very hard to get it all back. So what are some other things that affect the way that you can tilt in poker? Um, a lot of pros you'll know that always go to the gym, always eat healthy, they always have a healthy lifestyle because they believe that this can deeply affect what goes on in their mind and the way they look at situations in poker. So it has to be said that you should try and maintain a healthy lifestyle, you know, do some regular exercise, you know, the food you're eating, it has a huge impact on the way that you process things. It's, you know, it's just your well, it's your well-being as well. Like your mental attitude towards everything in life is going to have big impacts on how often you get affected by things that happen in poker. For example, if you're trying to make poker your sole source of income, and me as a student, I, cu I come and play during the summer and I, you know, it is my way of making my money you know I don't fancy ever having another full-time job at a supermarket ever again so poker really is everything to me and if you you know you're trying to make your way with poker and that's the only source of income it's going to affect you much stronger than it's just oh I fancy playing a bit of poker for a bit of fun because that's not nearly going to annoy you as much so yeah your mental and your healthful well he healthful healthy healthy well-being is going to really uh affect you when it comes to your decisions and how much the bad beats are affecting you. So you really need to think about that. There's not much more I could say on um, tilt management or your attitude management but really it's down to looking at yourself, realizing when it's happening and getting the hell out of there. It's one of the hardest things you can do and trust me I've lost a lot of money 
from my poor attitude control. Only the other day, I must have you know slowly built up some money playing in low stake tournaments, and then one bad decision. As you become better and better at poker, you'll you you actually get more annoyed by things. And I I had a hand where I couldn't fold queens before the flop, even though I knew that this person had kings or aces. It was just that blindingly obvious to me. Maybe one day I'll tell you this huge tale that has the kings kings and aces, and you know they've got it. And it was the fact that I could not get fold my hand pre-flop. And most people would just look at it and go, oh, my queen's running to kings or aces. That was just unlucky. That's just a cooler. Now, I don't hate that word. I never use the word cooler because I just believe it wasn't. Sometimes, you you know, there are such things as coolers, but sometimes you can kind of see it coming and you should, you know, make the big fold. I don't believe that accumulating chips is what the hardest thing in the game. I believe it's the folding of hands that is the crucial thing that makes you win, not the fact that, oh, you got aces and they won, uh, you out, you know, of course outplaying people has a big impact, but the main way that you'll find yourself at that final table is you've made a fold somewhere in the tournament, you don't know if it was a good decision, but when you find yourself on the final table, you know it was a good decision, because there was something that you managed to avoid to get to that final table. It's very rare that you didn't have to make a big fold to get to a final table, it's only happened to me once where I, you know, I sat a whole tournament, played for five hours, never made a really big decision, just sat there, would fold, 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 get a good hand, it would win. And it's very rare that that'll ever happen to you. Most of the time you're like, you're going, yeah, you're right, actually, I folded that. I folded there, and that's why I got there. So, yeah, the main thing you can do is just look at yourself, try and understand how you work as a player, like the amount of, maybe you have a breaking point, maybe there's a point where you know. I find that it sounds strange, but my I seem to get hotter when I'm angry. I seem to get my temperature seems to start going out. It's something like that, you know. You you just feel angry inside yourself, and you should be like, well, this is clearly not going to do me any good here. And the main thing it does is even when this is it, I you make a bad decision because of that. So you may even know in your head you should do something, but the anger inside you will make you do the opposite thing, which is you know only just going to frustrate you further because you know you're making mistakes. So Take a break, get away from the computer. And that's about all I can say, guys. Thanks for watching and cheers.